Hey there, geeks! Adam coming at you with the third installment of our Comic Card Crazy series. That's right, we're continuing to open up packs of Marvel Universe cards. This time around, we're getting into Series 3. Now, I will say that Series 3 was where I started to wane back in the day. I did collect them, but it wasn't like an all-out frenzy like it had been before. Uh, it actually wasn't until years later uh, I was living in Phoenix, Arizona. There was a Safeway supermarket right next to where I lived, and I walked in there one day, and they had a vending machine. And the vending machine was full of trading cards. I was so excited to see this. Now, most of them I was not interested in. They were old sports cards. There was Mickey Mouse cards and random stuff like that. But then I saw packs of Marvel Universe Series 3 and DC Cosmic cards. Uh, and so I started just like every time I would go there, I'd spend an extra dollar, grab a few packs until I basically had the whole set of Marvel Universe Series 3 all collected and plenty of doubles to go with it. So you know what I had to do with my doubles? That's right, I made a little tribute piece of art here. As you can see, I pulled this from a comic book. The page is a little bit more yellowed, uh, but definitely a new look, right? Because now they're going for this pink packaging here with some interesting members of the Marvel Universe on there. I mean, that Ghost Rider one is pretty intense and awesome. Uh, plus, I decided I would put this little mail away. Instead of putting it just on the pack, they told you that you could mail away and get t-shirts and a tin and all this other stuff. So anyway, very cool. I'm excited to see what we have here. Uh, maybe we're finally going to run into a hologram. That's what I'm hoping for. So let's check it out. Okay, so here we are with our pack of Marvel Universe Series 3 trading cards from 1992. Of course, these are the official Marvel Super Heroes trading cards. You have Wolverine coming at you. All those clouds are looking a little yellow, not uh, the gleaming kind of silver. Uh, notice you get 12 trading cards here from Skybox. That's right. Skybox uh, was definitely uh, a new and improved version of Impel, who had produced the first two sets. Same company and all that. Uh, but they wanted to have something that was a little more catchy. Uh, notice really tiny print there about the red inserted limited edition bonus holograms before that's like a major thing and now they're just kind of like eh, also holograms remember then they want you to order your marvel universe series 3 collector's album you can see here there it is with the punisher on there there was a t-shirt there was also a tin they don't mention but on here, they do tell you there's a limited edition mini press sheet and checklist, whereas before it was just about getting a checklist. So anyway, uh, yeah, just the new design on these cards was really interesting. The pink and then kind of the universe behind them, the galaxy look. But let's open this up. I'm uh, really curious to see what cards we get here because even the card designs themselves are very interesting. Oh, what's inside the pack? Wait a minute. What's all this about? Oh, this is telling you. Well, I've totally ripped it now. Uh, but this is a checklist of the uh, the fighting ability. What else? Yeah. So th this is that's interesting. They would put it there where you'd feel most people probably wouldn't even notice. But anyway, let's get this started here. As we we're looking at Bishop is our first one. Got an X-Man right out of the gate there, and he is a rookie at this point still. Uh, got the long hair he's rocking. So yeah, so look at this design here, what they got going on now with the the uh, power ratings are no longer just a bar going across, but now they're kind of like streaks of solar energy. So you get those ratings there. Looks like his biggest thing is fighting ability. But also look here where you actually get a quote. Uh, from an issue of a comic so he's like we have to be as cold as cruel as utterly heartless as they are uh yeah so anyway th this is an interesting idea to give you an idea you know like a, a taste of the character themselves real name unrevealed has it been revealed at this point uh then to get his first appearance and all that so very cool here. I also kind of like the, just this design of the, you know, the little circle inside the triangle for the numbers. So that's interesting. Yeah, interesting that Impel is still on the cards as well. Okay, so we're sticking with X-Men here because now we got Strong Guy, old Guido himself. Uh, Wizard actually kind of made fun of Strong Guy. Just I think the name itself was kind of a, a obvious thing, I guess. But look, his strength is off the charts there. 
And it says here, a 90s guy like me says what he feels. Oh, Straw Guy, are you the ultimate 90s character? Have we overlooked you or what you're all about? So he first appeared in a new Mutants annual. That's interesting. I did want to see here. Uh, he now uses his ability to absorb and release kinetic energy to battle the enemies of the United States. Okay, so that is his power. That's what I've always wondered. I was just like, did he have a lot of muscle mass, but he could absorb the kinetic energy and then he could use that then to build muscle for himself? All right, the Darkhold Redeemers. Interesting. So if you're reading that book, what do they have here for Spirits Darkhold number one? Yeah. So this was, uh, you know, kind of coming out of that whole world of the occult that Marvel was really trying to bring back in the early 90s. Uh, Vicky Montesi? I don't know. I, like, I think I read one issue of this at one point, thinking we might cover it on the show, and I was like, mm, I don't know, because Agent Sam Buchanan, Professor Louise Hastings, none of these really have the uh, <laughs> bombastic nature of Marvel characters, as we would expect. Oh, but sticking with that creepy vibe, here we go with Blackout. So yeah, Blackout, definitely a Ghost Rider villain, right? Let's see here. Yep, Ghost Rider, Volume 2, Number 2, so the Danny Ketch era. What do you say here? In the darkness, I shall rule all. And the fighting ability, again. So Blackout's a good fighter, eh? Uh, let's see, Blackout now seeks only two things, revenge on the Ghost Rider and murder for murder's sake. That's kind of what all the villains are about, right? Let's just do some murder. All right, Eternity here. Cosmic Beings. I guess we should note, yeah, the different, uh, you know, series within the series. A sub-series, I guess, or just a designation, but Eternity is a cosmic being. Wow, look, everything is off the charts except fighting ability. Eternity probably never has to fight. <laughs> Not part of the deal. I am Eternity. Heed my message and remain silent. For none may speak when I am present. <laughs> 1965, huh? Let's see. No being inspires as much awe and wonder as the mysterious eternity. The being who is no less than the living embodiment of all things. Yeah, never been a big cosmic Marvel guy, but it is an interesting design where it's just like, well, everything is in eternity? Ooh, here we go. So now we're getting into teams with the new warriors. This is a pre-Dark Hawk New Warriors. And, uh, you know, you do have Rage in there, so that's interesting. Let's see what, what everybody's names are these days. Are they changing? Okay, so Firestar, Speedball, Night Thrasher, Cage, Silhouette, Neymarita, Marvel Boy, and Nova. Wait a minute. Cage? That's not Cage, it's Rage! We just found a typo on this. What? That's weird. Did they think it was... What? No way. No way they thought that was Luke Cage, but that's bizarre. Ha! Huh. Hey, what do you know? These are good for something, these videos. First appearance, Thor 411, like we mentioned in a previous video, but they have the crash pad, huh? Because that's what cool superheroes do. They crash, man. Oh, man. We got a double in the same pack? More Darkhold Redeemers? Get out of here. <laughs> All right, not going to be a favorite, even if we got two. Ooh, so here's some team-ups. Magneto and Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom with a pistol? Doesn't that seem kind of lame? Uh, I, I can't imagine he would ever actually bust out a pistol. And uh, But look at the rip, like the tear that they're coming through. That is a great design. That's really neat. Let's see what this was about, though. So this was Supervillain team-up number 14. Perhaps the two most powerful evil geniuses on the planet Earth, Dr. Doom and Magneto, are natural rivals, each concerned with his own personal agenda of conquest. They have only teamed up on one occasion, and then only because Doom had used a hypnotic nerve gas to usurp Magneto's will. Okay. But still, no explanation as to why he had to have a gun? Ooh, here we go. Man, there's so much X-Men going on here. So we got Warpath. That's a pretty intense uh, design there. You know, I wish I could uh, recognize every artist that was going on here. I'm sure a lot of you who are like, hey, I know who that is. But he says here, this isn't a game for me. It isn't fun. I'm in this for vengeance, pure and simple. So James, proud star. Yep, so big on strength, big on fighting ability. Okay. Everybody's pretty medium, you know. When it, well, you know what I'm just realizing now is the projections go out so far past the actual 
designation that, you know, it looks like it's bigger than it is. If he's got energy projection and mental powers at a one, you're like, well, I guess, yeah, he just doesn't do that. <laughs> I, all this time, I thought, hey, they're all pretty powerful, I guess. Oh, back to New Warriors with Night Thrasher. So there he is. No skateboard in this picture. Did he just, like, ditch that after the first little bit? Because I remember a lot of people saying, oh, yeah, Night Thrasher, like Thrasher magazine. Okay, he says here, I was only four when my parents were killed. I've never, I'm never going to stop trying to avenge their deaths. Yeah. Okay, so Dwayne Taylor. But yeah, he's basically, you know, just the leader. He's the guy organizing, financing everything, right? But fighting ability, that's his, his claim to fame. All right, let's see here. Oh, there's Blaze. Johnny Blaze, just with that uh, mystical shotgun. Let's see what they say about him here. Johnny Blaze thought he was through with the supernatural. The stunt cyclist had finally freed himself from the curse of the Ghost Rider, settling down to a normal existence until Ghost Rider came roaring back into his life, this time in a new host body of a trouble hot on his heels. Do they talk about his gun? Yeah, the shotgun that shoots pure hellfire. This little baby shoots pure hellfire, enough to take your head off your shoulders. Don't make me do it. <laughs> That's pretty great. So pretty good fighting ability there, too. All right, last one here. No hologram, but we do have Doctor Strange. Ooh, look at him there. Looking pretty majestic. Looking nice there, Doc. Let's see. So fighting ability, not a strong suit, but look at those mental powers, energy projection, and intelligence. It was I whose path the dark, who chose the dark paths I now tread, as it is I who must walk them alone. So that's pretty fun. All right. Well, there are our cards. The only other thing here, just if you want to see a little closer, is that they have this triple offer, the collector's tin, the collector's album, and the card shirts. So could you order like a specific card design that you wanted? That's kind of neat. Let's see here. Card shirt. And then you just choose your number? Oh, that's kind of cool. All right. Well, speaking of your favorite card on a shirt, let's see what my favorite card in this pack was. Okay, so uh, an interesting pack of cards there. Actually, a lot of characters I wasn't expecting to see. Uh, but, it, you know, Series 3, like I say, I think that's what it was, was the artists that they got for most of the cards were kind of like, I don't recognize them. And then it was kind of like, I don't know, just the, the overall design was cool and unique, but it just didn't remind me of the exciting feelings I had about the first two series. That being said, as far as my favorite card goes, I think it's got to be this one here. I just, I, just that idea of, uh, I don't know if that's officially a Glock or what, but when Dr. Doom is packing heat, that's going to get my vote. That gets my attention in a big way. Uh, so yeah, so there was our Series 3. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you guys were collectors of that series back in the day, you got to let me know uh, down in the comments below. Uh, but we are going to be back finishing out this leg of Comic Card Crazy by opening up a pack of Marvel Universe Series 4 cards, uh, which I'm interested to get into because they had a fun gimmick to them. Who knows if we'll be able to put that gimmick on display as we open up the pack. Uh, but again, make sure you're subscribed here to the Wizards, the Podcast Guide to Comics YouTube channel. There's so many exciting things uh, that are, are coming the, your way this year. We have haul videos where we're sharing comics that we're picking up and, uh, and lots more. So I don't want to spoil the surprise, but stay tuned on that stuff. And also, just want to give you a heads up. If you've been enjoying this series, I do another uh, trading card related video series called Wax Pack Flashback for the Retro Network, who are the home of Wizards. And uh, so if you are interested in that, you can go over to TRN TV, the Retro Network YouTube channel, find Wax Pack Flashback. I'm opening cards from all over the place. Is it TV? You know, is it just random pop culture movies? Whatever it might be. But there are some comic card packs being opened up over there as well. That goes all throughout the year. So anyway, uh, we will check in with you later. And hey, keep your books bagged and boarded. Yeah.